What's up, guys? So today I'm gonna be recording. <laughs> you, can't, you can't laugh. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I forgot. You can't laugh. <laughs> Cannot laugh. So I have my other sister recording um, today's video. So if you hear a lot of laughs or freaking shakiness, it's because of that. And if you see me smile randomly, it's because she's making me laugh for some reason. Okay, so I'm making a care video or a care guide on southern alligator lizards. And I'm going to be discussing southern alligator lizards in four different topics. Nice. Diet, handling, um, tank setup, and breeding. And breeding. So, I'm going to grab my alligator lizard. This is my freaking baby girl who has its full tail and that is pretty rare when it comes to keeping alligator lizards so yeah let's get into it okay so let me you should make an intro that was my intro what i just oh. what we just talked about was my intro what the hell is wrong with you this you're drunk okay yeah what i want to go over is the fact that these things will eat anything their diet mainly consists of black widows, spider eggs, tadpoles, baby mice, bird eggs, Jerusalem crickets, you know, just anything that they could overpower in the wild, they will pretty much just scarf down. So when feeding them, you have to be wary of that. Um, never keep two alligator lizards that um, together that one is way bigger than the other because they might try to eat the other. So be wary of that. They are cannibalistic, so watch out for that. So when it comes to their feed schedule, I like to feed my alligator lizards um, three times a week for adults and um, for sub-adults and babies. I like to feed them around uh, about five times a week um, for a sub-adult and, and for babies, I like to feed them every day. So um, the reason you like you want to feed babies every day is just so they have a head start when growing because the more you feed them, the faster and um, more pretty much resources they're able to put into their growth. So if you feed them a lot as a baby, they will grow bigger. At least that. Can you turn on a fan? It's really hot. <laughs> Boy, if you don't get- So if you're having trouble feeding your alligator lizard, there's, there's, there's pro- <sighs> If you're having trouble feeding your alligator lizard, there is a few reasons why this is happening. Reason number one, your alligator lizard is spooked. When this lizard is put into fight and flight mode, it is its least concern is trying to get a meal, okay? So if you're holding your lizard all freaking aggressively or constricting its movement, it's not going to eat for you, okay? So yeah, make sure that your lizard is not in fight or flight mode or spooked because obviously it will not eat. Secondly, if you have if you have a new alligator lizard that you caught from the wild and it's not eating, just leave it in its tank for one to two days to get it um, accustomed to the new smells all around it. And in about two days, it should be good enough to eat. I mean, it should be willing to eat. And they are ferocious eaters, so they are fun to eat. They are fun to eat. So it will be. Oh hell no! It will be nice and happy. Little treat for you, getting to see, getting to see them eat. Thanks, dude. I promise. Okay, so you made it sound like you. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> then, then. What are you talking about? Okay, guys, I promise you, I do not eat alligator lizards. Okay, put that on hood. Put that on hood. Put that on hood. Okay. <laughs> Cringe. <laughs> Next. So, when it comes to dusting their insects with calcium, so there hasn't been much research done on how often you should dust their food with calcium or whether you should do it at all. Um, I like to do it at least once a week just to be safe. It's been working for me. Uh, it's not too much calcium and it's not too little. I mean, if you think about it, they probably get that much in the wild anyways just from random birdie bird eggs they're able to eat or the small invertebrates i mean the small vertebrates they're able to overpower so yeah um i like to dust their dust their meals with calcium at least once a week that seems to be it with the diet portion of this video so we will move on to handling okay guys so with handling alligator lizards 
This is where you could either make or break keeping an alligator lizard as a pet, okay? So I will be discussing or giving you, giving you, um, so I'm gonna be pretty much informing you with what I've learned over the, the year of keeping these as a pet and just having them live in my backyard. So, when it comes to handling, do not constrict their movement. And guys, I mean, this is pretty obvious, but I will be honest, I didn't know about it until recently. And that's why this one isn't freaking all mean. But if you constrict their movement, their fight and flight instinct will kick in almost immediately. Because if you think about it, when a bird comes down to attack these lizards or a coyote in the wild or whatever eats these lizards, they constrict their movement to golf it down. So they've been pretty much selected to have the instinct of if something freaking grabs me and does not let me go, it's trying to eat me. So I'm going to poop on this thing. I'm going to bite this thing. I'm going to musk this thing. This thing better let me go so I could live another day. And that's when they also drop their tail. So do not constrict their movement. Secondly, do not hold or grab them by the tail. Okay, they drop this pretty, this beautiful prehensile tail and it sucks when they drop it. Okay, I'll show you what it looks like when they do drop it. I did not make this one drop its tail. I did not make this one drop its tail, but- I... <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> As you can see, it does not, it does not grow back the same. Its pattern is lost. As you can see, this one has its original tail. This one doesn't, and it grows back not as long, not as gangster. It's just not as gangster of a tail, guys, okay? And if you want a gangster tail, you should follow this rule. So do not grab them by the tail or force them to drop their tail because it sucks, and who the hell wants an alligator lizard without their prehensile tail? It just does not make sense. Okay, um, um, one reason why people do not like to hold them, hold alligator lizards, um, in captivity or as a pet is because they do they do have a nasty bite for their size um it's not too bad but it's pretty surprising especially for their size and they do have a little bit little sharp teeth that sometimes do break skin so be wary of that and i'm gonna give you a couple of tips from what i've learned um some a couple of behaviors to look out for in order to tell when they're about to bite first thing they would do before they bite is poop or musk you which is pretty much um, them trying to make themselves smell nasty so that a predator does not eat them. Cause like, you're, let's say you go to bite this lizard and then you get a freaking mouthful of poop, your instinct's gonna be to spit it out. So that's why they poop on you. And then if pooping doesn't work, they will lower their jaw or um, expose their teeth. Doing, so, doing like, doing a dog-like motion. It's, it's really weird and bizarre. But they pretty much do that um, to warn off, like, you look, if you get any closer, I'm going to freaking bite you. So, yeah, look out for that. And um, to be honest, I only find they really get bitey is when you constrict their movement. So, as, I, as you've seen, as, you've, as you watched early in the video, do not constrict their movement. And you should be all good with that unless you have just an outlier of a um, real bitey lizard. So, next, or defensive lizard. Another thing that's um, pretty interesting or pretty bizarre is they actually do hiss. I, I just thought this was a cool fact and I might include it because why not? Um, I will put in a clip of one of my baby alligator lizards hissing right about now. I'll show you with this one, if you could get really close and be quiet, these things will actually hiss. Heard it? Okay, I hope you enjoyed that clip. That was another clip from Christopher, your boy. Yeah, you know the vibes, okay. So, boy, if you don't get. Oh, another thing. Um, if you do choose to handle them or try to tame down a defensive lizard, well, let's just say they earn the name alligator lizard for a good reason, and that reason is because when they bite, they will not let go, and they will do their death roll. The death roll being, they bite and they start twisting like an alligator. Okay, it does make it hurt a little bit more, but it's not too much. It's not too far off from the normal normal bite. So don't be too scared. And they only really do the death roll if they're like, if you're really messing with them. 
So just don't just don't be a bully to your freaking lizard and they should not death roll you. Um another tip for taming down a defensive or skittish alligator lizard is whenever you take your lizard out of their container, um as I've pretty much done right here, I would usually put it in another container, one like this. Um, I would have a couple of treats like dubia roaches, red runner roaches, oriental roaches, superworms, any one of those various um, feeder insects on the market. And I just have this thing just go to town and they start to associate you taking them out of their cage as, hey, this is, pretty, this is not so bad of a thing, you know? This little monkey person comes take me out of this enclosure, puts me in a container, Gives me a couple of snacks, you know what I'm saying? And puts me back and I'm able to freaking bask in the sunlight to digest my food, take a gnarly poop, and go on with my day, so. Once they start to associate um, your hand with food time, it's fun vibes, okay? They start to learn like, yo, this dude's pretty gangster, okay? He, you know what? I am pretty gangster. I am pretty gangster. So yeah, guys, that's just another tip to use if you wanna tame down your aggressive alligator lizard. So yeah. That's pretty much all the tips I have for handling alligator lizards. We will be moving on to the next stage of this video, which is bum ba da dum. What is it? I forgot. Um. So the next stage of this video is breeding. Okay. So the reason why I forgot that it was breeding is because there's not much known about breeding alligator lizards. And this is not an exaggeration. They've only been bred a handful of times in captivity from what I've known and what I've gathered. And there really isn't much known about it. So what I've gathered from the just looking up stuff and reading articles, um, they their breeding season starts around early spring. Um, they can lay up to five to 20 eggs. Um, they lay their eggs within the months of May, June, July. Um, their eggs take about around 11 weeks to incubate. And what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Oh, and alligator lizards also, they, re they reach sexual maturity at around 18 months of age, 18 months to two years of age to be exact. Um, yeah, and once they reach sexual maturity, they've been known to live, f live anywhere from 15 to 20 years in captivity, which is pretty amazing and pretty good news because this thing will be living with me for a long time I did facts okay so um yeah that's pretty much all there is um when it comes to breeding alligator lizards hopefully um by sometime next year by same time next year or the year after that I should be in the process or have already done or have already completed breeding these beautifuls and hopefully there's some YouTube videos out about that already but yeah, if I do learn more stuff about breeding alligator lizards, you guys, you guys will be the first ones to know. So don't even trip. Okay, last, last, last part of this freaking video. It's taken me like 30 times to freaking record this video. This I am very happy is ba -ba -da -dum! tank setup. Okay, so here, come over here, camera lady, my dude. So first thing I want to go over record all the setup is you want the alligator lizard to have many hides okay and as you can see there are as many places for the alligator lizards to hide um first i have this bamboo little thing that one of my lizards love to lay in as you can see i don't know if you can get a good shot because my sister's kind restart I, can, I don't know what you want me to do restart. I, I don't know what you want me to do restart wait a damn minute <laughs> okay okay guys so back to the hides okay so as you guys can see, I have many, many hides in this enclosure, um, mostly because in the wild, they'll find them where there's um, a lot of bushes, a lot of um, things for them to camouflage in. So I like to um, pretty much recreate their natural habitat with um, a lot of colors that match their skin tone, just to help them feel more secure when it comes to um, just laying out in the wild because they only really lay out where they're camouflaged. So yeah, I like to give them a lot of places to hide, especially when you have multiple. As you can see, I have multiple in here. I have upwards of four semi-adults, which should be enough for this tank and we'll get into that later. Okay, next, this is very, very important. Their water dish. Okay, so their water dish, 
This is very important. Okay. Guys, so when it comes to their water bowl or water dish, you want a water dish that's big enough for them to submerge in. And the reason why you'd want to do that is just because, and the reason why you guys would want to do that is stand the hell, is stand the hell up. <laughs> that's my sister laughing in the background. Okay, guys, I'm telling you, it has taken forever to record this video. Please bear with me. If I sound flustered or it's getting or I'm red because it's been getting hot in my room because this video has been getting me really heated. <laughs> I am not okay. Okay, let's continue. Make sure you give your alligator lizards a water dish big enough for them to submerge in. And the reason why you want to do this is because they are semi warm blooded. What that means is they are able to heat themselves up using nothing but their metabolism, which is pretty much what they eat. So they are able to heat, give themselves some heat, but since they're semi-warm blooded and not warm blooded, they cannot cool themselves down. That's what makes them different from being warm blooded. Us mammals are able to cool them, cool ourselves down while these guys can only just heat themselves up, which is pretty cool about reptiles. I mean, about this certain reptile, cause that's, this is some, that's something that's unique with this guy rather than most reptiles. So you'd want to give them a water dish big enough for them to fully submerge in just in case they are a little bit too cold. And yeah, so make sure you do that because that's really important and you do not want to have some cooked lizards. You do not want to have some cooked lizards. Okay, next. So guys, um, if you come over here, come on guys, come over here, come. Now look, if you look at the substrate that I have in this enclosure, I like to give them um, one to three inches of substrate just so that's enough to keep um, moisture in. With their substrate, you do not want to give them, you do not want their substrate to be too wet. You want them, you want their substrate to be damp, moist, but not soaked, okay? Which that, pretty much what that means is you're able to grab the coconut fiber, squeeze it, and if any water comes out, then that is way too much water. You just want it to feel wet in your hands and that should be good enough for them. And the reason why you do that is it helps with their shedding. They shed about approximately, 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 blah, blah, blah. <laughs> they shed approximately um, once every month and stop that obviously when they're full grown. So you'll know your lizard's full grown once they're done shedding anyways. So yeah, keep their substrate um pretty damp pretty damp you know what i'm saying and yeah that they should do good with that okay guys so another thing that you should do with you should give your alligator lizards although it's not a must but it's pretty high up there is give them things to climb on okay they are semi arboreal which means they do love climbing but they also love the ground okay Especially with this prehensile tail. Wait, the have... koala's really bad. If Wait, the have... koala's really bad. Bro, I'm really about the GTO pickle chin that boy. Oh my god. Okay guys, so since this lizard is semi arboreal, which means they um prefer trees and bushes and stuff, they love to climb, but they also love the ground. Especially when they have their prehensile tail. Um just give them a lot of places to um, climb. As you can see right here, I have a little mesh thing that they could climb on. I'm also gonna add some branches throughout the enclosure for them to climb on because with this beautiful long tail, they love to use their prehensile tail. And prehensile just means that they use their tail as an extra limb to grab onto and um, support their weight. So yeah, this is where stuff gets controversial when it comes to keeping alligator lizards. And that is, whether or not they need a basking spot or a heat spot or pretty much external heat. So I, in my opinion, and from keeping them um, for about a year now, I have found that they do indeed enjoy a basking spot or external heat. And even though they are semi warm blooded, it does help if they, um, it does help them to have that external amount of heat just to digest their food faster. So for them to digest their food faster, I do give them external um, heating like that lamp and their basking spot or warm spot for them to digest their food faster. I like to keep it around 90 to 95 degrees 
Fahrenheit. And um, I know it's hard to get an exact reading on temperature, especially when it comes to a lizard like this, you do not want to overheat it. That's why it's important you give them a water dish. And if you see your lizard constantly going into their water dish to cool down, then you know you have your heat way too high. You need to lower that, babe. You need to lower that sucker way down, okay? And yeah, guys. That's something to really watch out for. So make sure you look to see if your alligator lizard is constantly going to its water dish, because if it does, Chances are you're cooking your alligator lizard, so change that ASAP. Next, some people, another controversial thing about alligator lizards are some people say that they don't need UV. My opinion, they do, because they are a, um... They are active during the day, so they are getting sunlight, so why would they not need UV rays? So I like to give them UV. Um, it's not a must. There's no scientific proof that they do need it, but it can't hurt them. I mean... Like, why not give them UV, you know? So if you can provide it, you should. But if you can't, don't don't beat yourself up over it. Okay, another thing to look out for is since they are... Keep the camera steady, please. So um, another thing to look out for is since they are semi-warm-blooded, you do have to pretty much... Um, pretty much do not let their tanks exceed temperatures for at least their cool side which is half the enclosure do not let half the enclosure get any warmer than 70 75 degrees because like that is just over 75 degrees that is just way too hot for the cool spot in your enclosure i like to keep my cool spot around 65 65 ish degrees it varies throughout the day um because i do have air conditioning in my room so that does help with the temperature control. So yeah, just be wary with that guys because you don't want any cooked lizards on your hand. When housing multiple together, um, be careful that you don't- Wait, house. Chris, my AirPods just died and it's gonna put noise. What the hell was I talking about? Okay, when housing multiple alligator lizards together, since they are cannibalistic, um, be wary that um, if you house one that's bigger than the other, um, make sure that it's not too much bigger than the other because they will eat each other or attempt to eat each other if they think they could swallow or get it down. So oh, I mean, just don't put like a freaking hatchling or a little freaking three month old alligator lizard with the one this big, okay? Like that's just common sense. So yeah, don't do that. They might eat each other. Also do not keep mature males together um, since they will fight over territory and stuff, and they've been known to fight each other to the death, so that's not cool. I mean, who the hell would want to see that? So yeah, avoid that. And I mean, we're pretty much coming towards the end of the video. And last thing, last important thing that you guys should know is how to sex your alligator lizards. So I'm gonna go over that right now. So when it comes to sexing alligator lizards, as you can see, this one's a female. Her head is way, way, way skinnier, way more just slim, she has a slimmer body, and um, they do not get as big. She's not as bulky. I don't have a mature male or a close to mature male, but good rule is um, for males, their heads will be way more broader and wider, um, be more of a triangle shape rather than this arrow-like shape. Their head isn't much of a triangle, it's more of like a, like a sharp triangle while the males have a broader triangle, if that makes sense. Also with males, when you first catch your alligator lizard, they'll poop or musk on you. And if it's a male, their hemipenes will pop out, which is pretty much just the penis of the lizard. So if that pops out, then you know you have a male. And if an alligator lizard poops on you when you first catch it, or just poops on you and no hemipenes pop out, then you know you got a female. So yeah, guys, I mean, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if I have any extra ideas that came into mind while editing this video, I'll play them right about here. Hope you guys enjoy. Hope you guys enjoyed those freaking videos. I know they were gangster. I know they were lit. Freaking, you know what I'm saying? Okay. No, no, no. I hope you guys enjoyed those videos. If I added any, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I hope this helped anyone. If it helped at least one person with caring for their alligator lizards 
that would be cool because I mean I've seen I haven't seen any really good um, care videos or care guides um, for southern alligator lizards on YouTube so I've thought why not make one I also got a comment in one of my videos that I should make one so that's for you my dude and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and like comment subscribe I'll see you guys in the next video. Lates. Lates! Oh,